Spoilers, spoilers. These are the spoilers, spoilers. Didn't forget the spoiler song. Still going strong with the spoiler song. Steven has decided that he's not going to uh, have any sort of like official recordings of any theme music. He's just going to do it all himself. No, he's I can a, do it myself. He's a one-man band. I'm talented. He can make beats. I'm the biggest winner. You're the winner. Uh, Spoilers. The first guy that you see in the movie, I was just sitting there joking, and I was like, that guy is the guy who's going to do it. And guess what? That's the guy who's going to do it. Spoiler. Oh, my God. Per- pretty mm. ob- Like I said, if you don't, if in the first 15 minutes you don't <laughs> guess who it is, the first 15 minutes you're making a guess at who it is, yes, that's exactly who you think it is. It's that guy. So the, the, the fully, the meaty plot of the story is Liam Neeson is uh, an overworked, depressed alcoholic air marshal who lost his young daughter to cancer and then his wife left him um so he's you know he's the man with no family the john nothing to lose the john mcclain if you will of our story um although well what the, the when i was watching the trailer for this movie i was like liam neeson and a cell phone this whole movie is gonna be so exciting so gold, but he didn't threaten the dude once on the fucking cell phone. No, I was just waiting for one fucking threat. But that's because he never got to make a phone call. They never spoke in person. It was all by text. It was all by text. I got gypped. How can you threaten anyone I by got text? Gypped. What is he gonna do? Be like, I'm gonna fucking get you. Emoji of a knife. Uh, Emoji of a, sm- a sad emoticon face. Emoticon serious face. Uh, anger face, like squiggly line for the the upset face kind of thing. You you can't. That's you know that was actually yeah like you took away the ability for Liam Neeson to make ridiculous taken like threats, but that's okay. I think they were trying to be like Liam. This isn't just going to be taking three. So our hero, depressed alcoholic air marshal on a job he doesn't want to go to. Of course he doesn't want to be air marshaling tonight. He'd rather no, but be... he does. He asked to be on the flight. No, he asked not to be. Laid over in 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 London. Oh, he didn't ask to be on the flight. He wanted to not do it at all. Oh, he's gonna be on the next flight after he gets to London. Yes. Okay. Anyway, so yes, he doesn't want to be there. He's like, you know, God damn it, I hate my life, drinking and stuff. And he gets on the plane, and he meets the first important character. He meets is Julianne Moore. Julianne Moore. Her story is that she's basically got a death sentence. She's waiting to die. She's got a... I, I did not know how I felt about that whole she's got an aneurysm they can't fix storyline. I guess they were trying to give her some sort of like immediacy why she would be so into helping him. But don't you think... She, I mean, I don't know. Don't you think that if you... I think they just wanted to make her like adventurous. A sympathetic character. Someone who sympathetic just kind of... Sympathetic and adventurous. Oh, okay, yeah. I guess. So the storyline is Liam Neeson, obviously from you seen from the trailers, he gets sits down on the flight, gets ready to go to London, not happy about it. And he uh gets a text and the text says, you know, hey Marshall, what's up? <laughs> I'm gonna kill someone on this plane every twenty minutes unless well, you wire hundred fifty million dollars into my account. For for some reason too, this movie they tried to make it like a big reveal that he's an air marshal, even though they gave it away in every in the trailer, in every trailer ever. I hate when they do that. Which is so annoying. It's like okay, if you're gonna like when you watch a movie and you see these reveals that they reveal in the trailer, I'm like, why did you edit this film this way? You should never have done this unless it's just like so so different. The trailer people, people who make the trailers don't give a shit about anything the filmmakers are trying to do. They're just trying to sell the fucking movie. They don't. Movie. They're just selling the movie. That's yeah, it. well, that's bullshit because I think it would have been very interesting to see this movie from without the perspective of knowing he's an air marshal and to get the reveal of, oh, okay, wow, here's here's the air marshal guy. I just think it was, like, a good script that, like, reads really good and then when it got transferred to the movie, it doesn't quite... Play as it's well just, as the script sometimes reads. Sometimes movies, no matter right. how well put together they are, sometimes they just don't click. Like this movie felt well put together. It didn't feel like it didn't feel loose. It was very tight. It happened quickly. Things made sense on a level. 
You know what I mean? It's just that there was something that didn't click. And so when something that doesn't click, you start picking apart all the the plot holes and the whole and you know and the little storyline intricacies that don't work out. So basically, he gets a text and um he ends up you know, someone's going to die every 20 minutes. And the first person that actually die ends up dying by Le- Liam Neeson's hand, which is pretty exciting. So for a few minutes, I kind of thought, is this going to be like a supernatural thing? Is this like this guy a psychic? What is going on? But then, no, it ends up the two other people end up dying um, of poison. Blow darts. Blow darts. How very the old blow darts. James Bondian of you. It How must was- have been the Tahitians. <laughs> That was pretty kind of funny to me, though, that, like, blow darts was the ultimate weapon. And I'm wondering if, like, they read some TSA security guy, <laughs> like, blow darts are the future of terrorism. Like, you know, it's like, oh, my God, we should put this in the movie. Watch out. Watch out for those blow darts. <laughs> don't let that fucker with the blow dart come at you. So, I don't know. Yeah, like... <laughs> So blow dart, poison dart kill two passengers. That was actually kind of silly. It, no, it kills a, the uh, one of the ca- um, Captain. captains of the flight and it kills um, a passenger. So, you know, this whole time, da da da, there's chaos. People are freaking out. They have no idea what's going on. Um, and then they find out through this elaborate um, setup that the terrorists have put together when Liam Neeson finds their phone and they send all these messages to the ground control and telling him that he's a big old terrorist and that he's going to kill everybody. And so now they get on the news and everybody sees, oh shit, everyone thinks the air marshal's the terrorist. Um, you know, so... That I thought was like an unnecessary plot to detail. To involve the ground control yeah. to Major Tom. Everything was working really good <laughs> in the plane. We didn't need to get the fact that Liam Neeson is, like, smeared, and then we get news well, reports Well, I mean, stuff. but if you don't have that scene where he's smeared, you don't get the scene where the, the passengers try to overtake the plane. You know what I mean? But you'd really need to see it, like, in the news before you would well, believe that your own plane was getting hijacked. Well, that's the thing. What know? I find kind of interesting is that how much, how, if someone says they're in a position of authority... How long would it take you to start really doubting their position of authority? Remember that whole issue with the um the chick in the McDonald's where she yeah. called... You know what I mean? Like, how many hours of ridiculous behavior did that woman be- do because someone told her that they were a cop over the fucking phone? So if you have a guy waving a badge around, how... You know what I mean? How are you going to think he's a terror... Th- I actually found that kind of realistic, that it took them seeing him on the media being discredited as a terrorist to really actually start going holy shit we need to do something about this now you know what i mean because there were a couple people grumbling going he can't do this and who's this guy and i bet he's a terrorist but because no one's sure no one wants to be that first person to go hey let's knock the uh air marshal quote unquote over the head because he's a terrorist you know what i'm saying so i actually thought that was a pretty smart way to increase the tension of the passengers it's just sort of weird to me that they would be getting insta news on an airplane. Flight TV. Yeah. yeah, I kind of that was the thing that was sort of unrealistic to me that they were not watching. You don't watch broadcast television in the air. You watch pre-recorded stuff. Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden, these fucking news channels starts going off on the plane, and you're like, "What is happening?" Maybe that was the hacker. But what is he, how is he hacking He's at that a moment? master hacker. He's a movie hacker. See, he can the, do anything. See, that's when the plot holes start coming into this movie and you start, see, if the movie was just so good, you didn't give a shit. You never pick this stuff apart. You'd just be like, I don't care. It was amazing. But like, you start picking it apart and you start looking at it. It's like, where the hell did the broadcast television come out? And it was on when every single channel. did they get a chance to single channel. cut the hole in the plane for the blow dart to pass to the... I'm guessing he pulled a panel off the wall. But why is there a panel when you pull it off the wall? There's a small hole to the, captain, to, the cockpit. to the cockpit. That seems exactly plot holes. Why, you know, and then so, you know, ending up tension ensues. The passengers think he's a terrorist. He, they tack him to the ground. Liam Neeson says, there's a bomb on the plane. Turns out that. <laughs> that was a good name. Was, really. <laughs> was it really? It was. I wasn't even trying. You were channeling him. <laughs> so. Basically, 
his other air marshal friend, because there are always two air marshals on a flight, right? Is that the actual? Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah. So. There's always two air marshals on a flight, or one air marshal, or an air marshal and a clown. I don't know. So this. No, there's not an air marshal and a clown on every flight. <laughs> Wouldn't okay. that be fucking hilariously scary? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, well, I'm the air marshal, and this is my assistant, Gonzo the Clown. Like, he's going to distract you as I search Every your passenger gets a balloon animal. <laughs> Hold your balloon animal high. That's how I know you're not carrying a gun. Um, But no, Um, so his other...